welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I decided that I was going to come back and do another stitch with me, considering the last stitch with me was, well, it was, it was a success, put it that way. I had lots of people commenting, asking me questions, which was really lovely. Lots of people said that they loved my video, they loved um, listening to talk about what's going on with my life, and um, a lot of you out there got some stitching done, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, I've had a few things going on lately. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd come back with a bit of a life update of the stitch with me. The air conditioning is on for that, I apologize. Um, and I'm I'm actually sat kind of underneath it. So it's it's quite nice where, um, where it is because it's keeping me cool. It's out at the high, high 90s at the moment. Um, I think it's Tuesday today and it's about half past three, quarter to four. So we're still in the, you know, in the hottest time of the day but grab yourself a brew come and sit down and get your stitching out and we'll have a bit of a chit chat today i'm working on the heaven and earth designs it's about time by syra machete this one hasn't been out for a while it's not on my whip go but i thought that i would you know work on this one a little bit because i haven't done for a while and um i just thought it was time so i'll see you in a second I am going to obviously record the pattern keeper as well. Um, I just it just took me a minute to get set up. It always does. Um, these things are never plain sailing, are they? Um, but yeah, so let's get into this stitch with me. Um, I'm going to concentrate on this area here. I've got a lot of these parked threads. I know my frame is moving but I've got air conditioning above me and I think it's blowing down on certain things so apologies for that but like I explained it is a very 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 hot day so yeah right let's get into this so the first one is 310 and I was just let me just finish on these over here because I was just doing this area and then I kind of stopped part way. Where are we? Um, okay. Sorry, that was me. I banged the camera. I'm sorry. Okay. Right, let's get this show on the road. Oh. Okay. Interestingly, I don't have any black that's already done but that's fine sure I'll have some of it later so we'll start off this 890 okay so what has been happening with me over the last goodness how long a um, few weeks since I've seen you last um, a while back, I've got a list of everything I want to talk about because otherwise I'd completely forget. A while back, I my cat, Rascal, came in with a slight eye condition, what looked like an eye condition. Um, so I didn't think anything of it at the time. He'd obviously injured his eye somehow, but like I said, I didn't think of it. I didn't think anything about it or of it at the time. Um, but... And this, I'm sure this happened last year, but, um, one, two, three, um, over the last few months, and I've only actually noticed it over the last few months, his eye has gone really cloudy, and then it looks like he's walked into an, it looks like he's walked into a needle, he hasn't, but there's like a pinprick of, um, injury in his eye bear with it. this is a little bit fluff so I'm going to see if I can cut this 
fluff off. I might just have this restart a thread because that's going to bug me. I've got a really, really fluffy thread here, but I'll just um, park it and then I'll get rid of it at a later date. Um, or actually what I can do is I can make sure it goes underneath my work so we don't see it. But yeah, so he um, came in with like a slight injury in his eye, but it didn't look like an injury at the time. He wasn't coming in with his eyes closed or um, like looking like it was injured. Just I didn't even notice anything until I started seeing the cloudiness, which is really odd. So a couple of weeks ago, I took him to the vet and um and they said yeah they put dye in it and he said yeah he's got an injury in there it's quite deep so um they gave him some like eye dye so that they could have a look in it and um i think i just said that sorry so they dyed his eye so they could actually have a look inside his eye to see exactly what was going on and um he obviously didn't like that very much and then they put an anaesthetic in there so that they could make an abrasion of his eye. I'm going to move this cross to somewhere else so I can go underneath the work. Because um, what he wanted to do is he wanted to, his eye um, to like basically force his eye to fix itself. And what was happening also is that the um, cornea, there's two layers of the cornea apparently in a cat, and the cornea had come away like the two layers had come away from each other which is where you get the um well which is where he was having the cloudy issue the cloudiness so he wanted oh, that's not going to work either i need to move that somewhere else so he wanted his body to basically fix itself um that's not going to work let me see if i can go down here bear with one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Up one. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Up one. Three, four, five, six, seven. Up one. Yeah, he basically wanted his. That's better. He wanted his body to fix it himself so then he sent me away with some eye drops and um, and a lot of the cloudiness has gone there is still a little bit there but most of it has kind of fixed itself which is great so he's only got a little area now so um, yeah that's good so kitty cat is all hunky dory he's in he's actually spending a lot more time in at the moment because it's so hot bless him the other two just love it out, so they're just living the dream. They're yeah, living the dream. So yeah. Um, what else? I said on my last video, I think I don't know whether I mentioned or not, but my well, the farrier that I had last time absolutely butchered my horse. I mean, she was proper like lame. Um, and so I got another farrier to come out. Um, someone that was actually qualified and this time round like he obviously didn't take much off like she'd had nine weeks growth and there was hardly anything there she had no foot no soul no nothing god I felt so awful so he literally took hardly anything off her um but you know what he did do is tidy her up a little bit and the funny thing is is that my horse would not stand for the other farrier at all like the one that butchered her or for obvious reasons i think he i think she actually knew that he was like a crap farrier but for this farrier here like the other one that came out i even said to him you know she's gonna mess about because that's what she does so just make sure you come with extra time um and he was like okay no it's fine and i said you have to have the patience of a saint as well because i don't want you beating her Five, six, seven. Not that he would do anything, because I would beat him around the head if I saw him beat my horse. Um, but she literally just stood there. Absolutely. Like, he must have thought it was a right idiot. I didn't know my horse. Honestly, it gobsmacked me. And I think it even gobsmacked Jess, who was stood by the side of me. She was like, Holly, what's going on with your horse? Like, why is your horse just stood there? 
why is she not rearing up and backing out and kicking everyone and I was like I know strange huh so yeah whoever says that horses don't have a sixth sense they absolutely do have a sixth sense and they know exactly what's going on around them 100% Hundred percent. But yeah, so just had my land bush hogged, which was nice. So it's all beautiful again. Um, I will put in some pictures at the end of this video because I know everyone's interested about what things look like. I know one lady did ask me if I could put some pictures on my property because um, she's just wondering what it looks like. And I'm more than happy to do it now it doesn't look like, excuse my language, a shit show. Because it really did look like one before. And it was actually that embarrassing that I, I wouldn't invite anyone over. Like, I've got some people that want to come and see it and I'm like, no way, no way. Like, not on God's green earth are you stepping on my land because it looks like awful. However, it looks really beautiful now. It just, it's amazing, isn't it? Like, how much just a haircut you know a grass haircut how amazing it can look and it looks stunning now and it's obviously all beautiful and green and I'm surrounded by trees here which is one of the other reasons why I fell in love with this particular piece of land because I can't see anyone um, which is nice I don't see any buildings I don't see any houses oh it's just so gorgeous and I feel like I have fallen back in love with it again Okay, that's what we got going on on there, that's done, which is really nice, so I'm doing this stitching in, in no kind of particular order, I'm just um, fudging it, like doing whatever, whatever takes my fancy. I was doing, um, what do you call it, Royal Rose, but I just kind of do whatever and you know what I think it's because that I, I kind of do royal rose but then I kind of fall back into that kind of whatever category um, so that I don't and that's why I don't get the lines you see I know a lot of people religiously do royal rose and then they are saying that they they're getting lines and I think it's because I do this kind of this way which is no particular way I just kind of do whatever that's the reason I don't get any lines. I know sometimes it can be really, really difficult. It can be really difficult. But yes. What else has been going on? Oh, I went to the farmer's market in DeKalb. Um, I'm in at I'm just outside Atlanta, so I'm like 45 minutes outside Atlanta which I think is a nice sort of time and it takes me about half an hour to get to the DeKalb market so that's not so bad and this time around I went with one of my sports massage therapy clients um, the owner of one of the horses that I do because she needs some bits and you know what I know it's only half an hour down the road but it is nice to go with someone so you can chat to someone along the way and things like that um, so anyway we had we went there and then we had some lunch and that was really nice um, and then then what happened then I got a call whilst I was at the decab market from one of my other friends who's British who lives about half an hour from me saying holes do you want to come around for a gin and tonic I ain't seen her for ages she's been her daughter vaults she's a world she's in the world championships vaulting which is if you've anyone ever seen if anyone knows or doesn't know what vaulting is basically you have a horse on a long line a lunge line that's going around in circle and canter and then you've got someone that's doing somersaults on the back of it somersaults and like crazy stuff that there is no way on god's green earth that you could ever get me doing anything like that i mean for one i'm not flexible at all um and I would just totally put her to shame and myself um, but like oh honestly this girl she is her daughter she is fantastic at it she's just oh, miss flexible like you wouldn't believe absolutely stunning she is 
So she's been here, there and everywhere in Europe, in California, then back and then back, gone again and then back and then gone again. And she's like never here. So trying to pin her down for a, you know, a drink or a coffee has just been nigh on impossible. I call her Miss Elusive because she really is. Um, you know, one minute she's around, the next minute she's not. Um, but anyway, it was really nice. I, I had made arrangements to see her like the next day, but she said that she had lots going on and um, she had to do something for something else. So she had to cancel and was I free, you know, that evening to pop round for gin and tonic and it was really nice. We had a, we had a bit of a natter, we had some salad, you know, put some nice chicken on the barbie and had a salad and I had a gin and tonic. I was driving, so I just had the one and then I just, get, I just got her to keep filling me up with tonic. Um, but no, it was a really, really lovely evening, really lovely evening. And then the Saturday after that, I had, um, I was invited by another British friend, actually, funnily enough. I feel like I'm, I'm surrounded by Brits, which is great. She's a horse trainer and she's married to a farrier. Really, 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 really handy, obviously. Um, and she had jump a flat and jump clinic going on at a friend's house so she invited me there and I took Jess my boarder and we spent the Saturday there and it was lovely it wasn't what we expected it to be because bless her the lady that owns the farm that we were at her horse don't know how but put its leg through the fence and ended up staking its leg put a stake through its leg the whole way through I mean it went through one end and out the other I mean honestly and obviously the owner was a little bit like I can't deal with this like literally it's one of those things isn't it that you can deal with anything as long as it's not your own child and it's not your own blood um, so like for me if it'd be my horse I'd be in exactly the same I would have literally fainted and gone I can't deal with this but because it wasn't my horse I basically told her to go and phone the vet and stay out the way <laughs> and I um I was sat there um, uh, hosing a horse to try and keep inflammation down as, as much as possible um, luckily it wasn't near any joints which is great because obviously any infection in a joint is basically you can kiss goodbye to your horse then and there so that's that was kind of okay vet took forever even though it was supposed to be an emergency bless him I know it was a Saturday as well which is like the worst time it was he took forever to come out but it is what it is anyway so I kept her busy she was like out the way and I was just dealing with it and I was like just keep on the phone to the vet try and get the vet out you know try and check when it, where he's where he's coming from where he is and and all that jazz and I um I was like your horse is fine it's still standing um so anyway what happened was the vet came out sedated the horse and then apparently it was like a well, it was superficial. I don't know, really. So he was able to take the um, um, the stake, the bit of wood that was in embedded in its leg out quite successfully. So that's what he did. But yeah, so that was a fun field Saturday. That was a few weeks ago now. And then, then what happens? Sunday, I was, the Sunday after, what was I doing? Can't remember, I was doing something. And then one of my friends um, invited me over to hers. She's, I've got two friends that live together. One's Greek and one's Italian and they're absolutely lovely people. Um, the Italian is married to an American and he's lovely as well. And I was invited over, um, because she just had a baby, which is really, really sweet. She's had a little boy, so she's got a little girl. This is the Italian lady. Um, they're all my age, both my age. And then um, now she's got a little boy. So I went and got something for him, a little something for him, and a humongous bottle of wine for her, which is, I did promise her I was gonna get her a massive bottle of wine when she gave birth to a little baby, because she hasn't been allowed to drink whilst pregnant which is for obvious reasons um so i promised her that and i lived up to my promise <laughs> um what color is that 3031 okay so yeah so she was happy 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 
And she got a lovely bottle of wine um, from moi. This is like the longest thread in the world, this. So that was nice to see her. Um, I didn't leave there until really late, like half 11, 12. Um, I did something in the day. I can't remember what I did in the day now. And then I went round there in the evening. It was just like, oh yeah, I'll be finished here at a certain time. I think that was the Grand Prix, you know, um, not Grand Prix. I think that was the um, jump clinic, actually. Oh uh, yeah, that was it. It was a jump clinic because when I was the um, when I was there, I got a message from her saying, oh, are you going to be able to come round today? Like. Um, and I said, well, I'm not really too sure what time this finishes. And, and at that point, I didn't know what was going on with the horse either. So I didn't want to say, oh, yeah, and leave, like, the owner of the horse standing. Um, I wanted to make sure that a horse was sorted out before I left. Um, so that happened. Um, yeah, and then on the way back, I said, oh, I'm just going to go home and feed the horses, get the cats in, get them fed. And then I can be... Yeah. And then I can come round, and I did, and we had a chat, and we had dinner, and it was really, really nice. It was a lovely evening. Um, so I did that. So yeah, I've, I've, I've been trying to get out there. I've been trying to kind of get a bit more social, because I am a social butterfly. I am, I, it just drives me nuts being on my own um, a lot of the time. I don't, I don't mind my own company, but you know, there is, I think, there is only so much of my own company I can take. <laughs> but it has been nice to do stitching, but obviously with, you know, doing all these things, I haven't really had a lot of stitchy time. So I know Tara messaged me the other day saying, how are you getting on with your, because I, I think I put a bet on that I would get like 9,000 stitches done. No, 8,000, I'd reach an 8,000 goal. But I said to her, like, to be honest, Tara, with how busy I've been lately, like, I'll be lucky to even get my whip go. And she was like, oh, okay, yeah, no worries. But, you know, I mean, I've spent a few more days on this than I should have, um, just because I wasn't getting my stitch count. And um, this isn't even on my whip go. I mean, how crazy is that? This isn't even on my whip go, but I wanted to do a stitch with me, with you. Um, but I just needed to get, you know, some decent stitchy in it first. Um, so that's, that's what I've done. I want to try and get a thousand stitches in this, but I don't think that's going to happen. Not obviously tonight, but or today, but just in general. But yeah, I still don't think it's going to happen. Not going to happen. Hey ho, is what it is. We do this to enjoy it, don't we? We don't do it to like, we do it to enjoy ourselves and challenge ourselves. It's not life and death. So, just got to learn to chill a bit, really, I guess. Because no one died. That's what my dad says. When I get really stressed out about stuff, he's like, did anyone die? I'm like, no. He said, well, don't get stressed out about it. Can you change it? No. Well, then don't get stressed out about it. <laughs> Uh, it's quite funny. <laughs> there's um, um, there's a particular um, <laughs> I am really stressed at some things, and some things I'm not stressed out about. It's really bizarre. Like the massive things I don't stress out about, but I stress out about the small things, and I think that's you know a lot of people. And then there is, and there's this film that has got um Tom Hanks in it, and it's quite it's something um something over bridges, spy bridges over spy or spy can't remember it's got tom hanks and then another really good um actor that my dad likes and he's in um he's also in um what else is he in um that henry the eighth thing that i love not the tudors um the, um uh, the berlin the berlin the berlin something the berlin's just no the other berlin girl 
yeah, so anyway, he's the father of Anne Boleyn and um, Mary Boleyn in that, I um, can't remember what his name is now, and it's like, my dad would seriously like be so disappointed if he heard that I can't remember his name because I know him. <laughs> but anyway, so there is, um, there's a line in that where um, Tom Hanks says to him that you, oh, you know, because he was being accused of being a spy, and he said, you know, considering you're being accused of being a spy, you don't seem overly stressed about it or upset or, you know, like, and he said, would it help? <laughs> and that is such a good, that's such a good, like, point. Honestly, you know, when people are like, you know, you're not showing any emotion of this or you're not showing any emotion of that, and it's like, would it help? Um, no, actually, getting stressed out about something that you absolutely cannot change does not help anything. So it's quite interesting. Um, that is quite a, quite an interesting analogy. Um, or, uh, you know, so I actually thought that was, that was quite good. Would it help? So yeah, I use that on my dad now. Like, uh, you know, there's been certain things where he's asked me about stuff and then I can't remember like, just because he knows the way I am, like that I stress about stuff first and then I think about it and he's like, oh, you don't seem overly upset. And I'm like, would it help? <laughs> Does make him giggle. Giggle, giggle. All right, let's do, let's do that one first and get that one out of the way. But yeah, so I really enjoy doing this one. I think that's why I wanted to do it because A, it hasn't been out for a while. B, obviously it's not on any of my whip goes. So if I don't, if I don't pick it up this year, it's not gonna get, get picked up at all because it's a new start. So it hasn't made it onto any of my whip goes. Um, and it's one that I really do enjoy working on. So I thought, well, why don't I do a stitch with me? I absolutely love it. Um, but I did just want to get some, you know, stitches in there first so it didn't look too rubbish when I was doing it. Um, so yeah. That's cool. So what else has gone on? What else has gone on? Um, Other than that, I think my arena starts again, starts back up again in on like the 1st of September or the first week of September, let's just say that, first week of September. Um, with a bit of luck. So I'm just dealing with invoices and quotes and things that, like that at the moment. Um, Right, what did I do wrong here? There's me chatting too much. I think I've already made a mistake. So... Okay, so the first mistake is that... I'm going to have to fudge it. So I think that was supposed to come down here. Yeah. I'm not going to bother. I'm picking it now. I can't be bothered. Whatever. It will stay what it is. Whatever, Trevor. And then I can just fill in the blanks of the black. No one will know. Just don't tell anyone. <laughs> I actually really don't care, to be honest. Oh, hey ho. Right, two. Okay, so hang on. Let me sort this out. Bear with. So two two, one down, how did I get that so wrong, I don't understand that, that's what annoying, that's me not concentrating on anything I'm doing, Okay, I'll tell you what then, let me let me do it this way because one, two, three, four. Otherwise it's gonna be all wrong. One, two, three, 
so as long as that is right it's just going to be right let me just think about this for a second let me just think about this for a second because I'm not sure if Sod it. Right, because it is, um, because I'm, I'm actually making a shape here, I don't know if I'm going to be totally out wrong. Now, if this was just a load of confetti, I wouldn't really worry about it, but um, it's not. And I think it just, I think I need to kind of do this properly, bear with. So yes, I am going to unpick this, but it won't take long. Right, okay, so, um, that just happened, and we're not going to talk about that, <laughs> sorry about that everyone, okay, so let's just get this to where it's supposed to be. I can't even remember what I was talking about before I messed up. Okay, that's right, because that one and that one is on the same height. Perfect. Okay, so that's fine. And then, how did I not even notice that? I don't get it. I don't even understand why I didn't even notice it. Crazy. Okay, so this needs to go. Oh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Six. Bear with. Where is it? There it is. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just gonna park it there for now. And if that's not the right place, then I'll sort that out at a later date. As in later. Right, okay, so that's fine. So let's go back to this. So Bear with them, just 
trying to get my needle loaded. Okay. So now I can do this correctly and one goes there. goes there. Perfect. So anyway, I think I was talking about this project um, that I haven't been, it's not on my whip go this year, so if I don't work on it then it doesn't get worked on. Now, I don't really want to work on something that I'd already done a stitch and chat with because sometimes it's nice to, to like have different things to look at. So, you know, the other one would have been Dahlia, but you've already seen the Dahlia. And the next one on my whip go is actually, I think it's the full coverage fanatics, um, is um, the Rise of the Witches, which is the cat one. But I've already done a stitch with me on that one. So would that, would that be boring? You know, because you've already seen it. You've already, I've already done a stitch with me on that project. So that's why I thought, well, maybe you'd appreciate me doing a stitch and chat with something different. And as you haven't seen this since probably February time, I thought I'd make it this one. So that's my reasoning for that. Most definitely. I don't know what to have for dinner today. Um, two, three. Yeah, I don't know what to have for dinner today. I've made lasagna. I've made curry, chili con carne. I'm just getting bored with all the things that are really easy to make. Um, because it's kind of all I make really. I had a stir fry last night, like a beef and broccoli thing. Mm. Oh, so, some really exciting news is I was on the phone to my girlfriend last night, my best friend from back home, and we booked some flights for her to come over in October, which is really exciting. So that's something to look forward to. So she's gonna come over and see me. I think she's just getting really tired with her job at home and she's just sick to death of dealing with the people that she deals with. Um, she's around, she lives, she works in a very male dominating environment. She's a regional director for a big, um, I guess you'd call it a builder's merchant. Travis Perkins and um, in the UK we haven't got Travis Perkins out here and they're just I don't know just being a bit of a nightmare so she needs a break she needs some girl time so we're gonna have a fun filled week full of wine and delicious meals and things to do and I'm gonna take her and show her around Covington and show her where I live and you know, we're going to have movie nights and might take her to Atlanta and have, like, you know, go to a nice wine bar. So that'd be quite nice. That'd be exciting. And then my mate from uni, um, she is in Maine at the moment doing, like, a Camp America thing. You know, the kids' ca summer camps out here, which is really, really popular not so much popular at home because I just don't think we have the weather for it to be honest um, she is traveling and wants to come and see me so she's coming down with a few friends which is nice um, so I'll get to say hello to her she'll stay a few days so yeah um, I think it's gonna be a fun few weeks Really looking forward to my arena starting. I need to make sure that the, um, the sand arrives when it's supposed to arrive because if the guy needs to take away his 
um, well, whatever heavy lifting equipment he's using and then bring it back on, it's just going to cost me more money. So, so yeah. I need to make sure that that is sorted. So yeah, a few things to do. Um, I'm still doing my accountancy stuff, like my, for my business. Um, slowed work down a little bit, even though it's work slowed down a little bit anyway. I haven't actually done any extra advertising um, because I want to make sure that I'm available for the build and everything else. I went to a Grand Prix this Sunday, which was quite nice. No, was it Saturday? Saturday, this Saturday. I went to a Grand Prix with some clients up in Alpharetta they invited me to um, a Grand Prix, which is nice. So we did that. Um, so yeah, I have been really, really busy. So with regards to doing stitching, I haven't really had a huge amount of time to do anything. But I am still, I'm still up there with my whip go. Like I've still got time. I've still got time. I've got to do... The only thing left I've got to do is 500 stitches on the Rise of the Witches and a thousand, I believe, on the Sweet Life. I've done... Um, Peacock Love. I've done Grace Face 2. Um, what was the other project I worked on? I can't even remember now. Um, I can't remember. Literally, my brain is rubbish. Absolutely shocking it is. But yeah. So yeah, being busy, busy, really. Busy, busy, busy. Um, but it's good. It's a good thing. I feel like I need to go out and get some food after this. Just don't have anything in. Um, and I'm just so fed up with the same thing all the time. Fajitas, lasagna, spaghetti bolognese. Um, I feel like I need to cook something a bit better than that. Well, not better, just different, you know? might treat myself to a bottle of wine as well. Why not? Mm. Why not? looking forward to the new Whipgo numbers coming out in um, a few days to see what else to be working on oh I'm just going to bear with one sec oh that's better I'm just going to fold my legs because it's hurt my back my back and my neck are killing me right now that's okay it's okay Um, saying I've done 93 but that's we all know that's a total lie don't we because half of that I unpicked ha <laughs> ha ha oh well we've all, we've all been there haven't we we've all been there we have all been there is what it is right I'm just gonna I need to get rid of that thread but I'm gonna put it underneath these um, stitches like here so I need to turn it over but I'm not gonna do that with you guys um, I'll do that 
off camera because it's really annoying to set it up in, this, in the right place. Um, okay, so let's see if we can sort this out. One second. I mm, just need to cut into this thread because it's just frayed a little bit. There we go, perfect. Oh, goodness me. Come on, holes. Come on, holes. Right. Okay. You know what, I might just add a salad tonight because it's so hot at the moment that I just don't feel like eating anything hot. So I might go to Aldi because we've got an Aldi here. I might go and get a bottle of wine, some salad. Um, maybe do like an egg salad or something. Right now I'm totally lost. Okay. And that goes there. So that's been my month really. Haven't really done anything else, but I mean, it's been quite a lot. It's been quite a lot. Oh, my TV stopped working. Absolutely brilliant. Like literally fan bloody tastic. Just literally stopped working, um, black screen. So I phoned up um, the Hisense company. I've got it from Walmart. I phoned them up and my warranty had run out by 11 days. Can you believe it? So I, I then had to buy a new TV, which I literally couldn't do because I was absolutely skin. I'd have to, I just had to pay my payroll taxes for this quarter. Um, and as you know, I pay, I've got wages for another person as well. Um, I need an employee for my business, for my visa. So yeah, I mean, that's loads of fun. And um, so, it just crippled me this month and what with my mortgage going out as well it was just like I had no spare cash so my I actually applied for care credit for my cat just before because it was suggested to me that care credit would be able to help and um, given that I'd had really bad experiences with trying to get credit before I've got a 996 credit score in the UK like my credit score is phenomenal and it hasn't really changed it's fluctuated between 996 and 998 um, and it's just fluctuated between those two for however long but it's it's never been like lower um, than that so I am um, and I've never ever been declined for credit in the UK ever <laughs> on anything doesn't matter what it is so when I'm getting all these like you've been refused credit, you've been refused this, decline, decline, decline. I tell you what, it's after debilitating, it's humiliating, it's embarrassing because I'm like almost 40, you know? And I'm just like, I've got a 16 grand limit on one of my credit cards at home. I've got five grand overdraft on one account, five grand overdraft on another account. Obviously I'm not in my overdrafts, but like, I'm not an idiot, do you know what I mean, with money. And don't even talk to me about overdrafts out here. They don't even know what they are. 
It's crazy. Um, it's crazy. Like, I wanted an overdraft just so, in case, just for my business, in case um, I was ever, I never needed to pay something out and I needed it to clear. So I just needed that kind of, you know, um, sense of like safety net that if, if there's anything I needed to pay for, it could go out. So, anyway, for one, my bank put the overdraft on the wrong account, which didn't help. Um, because, and I'll tell you for why, I went into Walmart and bought some bits and then I went somewhere else and bought some gas and then somewhere else and, you know, I had about six transactions. And obviously I don't check my bank balance every five seconds of the day, but, you know, I, I generally have a decent running balance in there. Yes, it was getting a little bit low, but I always thought, well, it would decline if, you know, I haven't got any money in there. I'll just come out saying, oh, like, you know, cars declined or whatever whatever something else that's never happened to me either because I've always had an overdraft and so I look at my bank account and I'm like massively in the reds on my on my personal account and I'm like what the hell is even going on so I have a look at my um I have a look at my um bank balance you know my balance and it's like they charged me and every time I went overdrawn I had a I had an overdraft on this account okay of $750 apparently that's the most they've given anyone I mean that's not even an overdraft but I'm not even gonna like talk I'm not even gonna go there because it just does my head in anyway so I have got a $750 overdraft which in the UK means if you have an overdraft for a certain amount you pay something per month to use it and I think with NatWest, my UK account, it's like £6.50 a month. But you can go in and out your overdraft as much as you like, it's just there. And that's, that's what you get charged per month to use it. Whether you've used it once or whether you've used it a thousand times, £6.50. Six dollars, yeah, £6.50. Um, so right, that was what I was kind of sort of thinking. But this is before I'd even check my bank balance. Anyway, I went into my bank and I kid you not, every single transaction that I made, they charged me $40. I had six $40 charges on my account. And obviously, like, for one, they put the overdraft on the wrong account. It wasn't supposed to be, be on my personal account. It was, only, it was supposed to be in my business. So that was their F up, number one. Number two, I went into the bank and explained the situation, and I was like, what the hell is going on? You know, why did a, no one tell me this was going on? And two, like, why on earth did my account not... Um, my card not declined and they said oh because you've got an overdraft on it I was like no darling no that's not how overdrafts work you don't charge someone for every single time they use their overdraft that's not how overdrafts work and if that's how overdrafts work here then you need to cancel it right this minute so anyway I got her to cancel it I opted out of an overdraft and then obviously I complained to the bank and explained the situation that this is just unacceptable and they were only allowed to give me two of my um, um, charges back. I mean, it's just a disgrace. So I ended up with like $300 worth of charges. Um, unreal. And I, I know that like, yeah, well, it's your account. You should know what's in it. But you know what? When you expect an overdraft to be on a, a different account, because that is you know that's what was set up and that was what was agreed and then and then you find out later that they've set the overdraft up on the wrong account now I don't know my account numbers off by heart I've got four accounts with them and I don't know every single account number off by heart so I was hoping and expecting by saying to them I need an overdraft on my Holly Vernon doing business as account my DBA account that they would be able to see I've got a DBA account a personal account a, um, savings account which is like an absolute joke right now it's got nothing in it and then i've got an llc account and i needed an llc account in order to um to go forward with my um my visa so i needed to move well basically anything that was for the business needs to come out of my llc account now so my dba account has just turned into like a dumping account but anyway so um you know that was what was agreed so i you know, I expected when I said to them, oh, I need it un under my DBA account, that they were going to set it up for the wrong, bloody, the right flipping account, and they didn't. But anyway, so I ended up with, not only was I like skint this month, and I had loads to pay out, 
I also get hit with all of those flipping charges, which were just, I could have done without this year, to be honest. Um, absolute joke. Joke, joke, joke. So, oh, honestly, messed me up big time. But it's done now. And, um, yeah, it is what it is. So, is what it is. So, okay. What's going on here then? How did you end up over there? I'm so confused. Okay. So anyway, Dad, bless him, has gone back to Dubai from Saudi and he's going to transfer some money over. And then hopefully when he goes back, because he's going to Dubai via, he's going to Valencia via Dubai. So he's going to Valencia via Dubai and then he's going back to Saudi via Dubai. So at the end of, so he's going to be able to send me some money and then at the end of this month, he'll be able to send me some more money to go towards the arena. Um, so hopefully we'll, um, we'll get something sorted out. With a bit of luck. Um, yeah, I might just have to wait like a week or so to start the arena. To be honest, but you know what? What's a week in the grand scheme of things, really? Um, I know my border is is gagging to get an arena, but I mean, I'm not being funny. She doesn't even pay me what she should pay me. Anyway, for a start, so um, she can wait because this arena is going to cost me about twenty-five thousand, and she wasn't. She doesn't want to pay any more um, any more boarding, so that's fine. You know, I haven't got money grown on trees around here, so. And I do a lots of favours, so she can just wait for a bit. She can wait for a bit. Okay. Right, so what have we got going on over here then? So that is short. That's short, so I'm going to get rid of them in a bit. Um... One looks like it's the same as the other one, so is that 890? Mm. Just gonna check these colours a second. Yeah, and it's like 890. Oops, sorry, I just banged the camera. Bang the camera. So I need to fix some of these first. Bear with. I have to come up this way. So who's ready for fall then? I'm so totally ready for fall. I'm so ready for some cooler weather. 
So this arena has probably come at a good time because it's going to be cool now for the next nine months. Well, it's not going to be hot. Put it that way. It's going to be warm still. Obviously September and October is still pretty warm. Um, but it's not going to be like melting out there. Which is good. Because... I've been melting, ponies have been melting, even though they've got a, um, they do have a shelter, they just, they do use it, but just not as much as I want them to. I even put some hay in there the other day to try and persuade them to go in there. And they went in there a little while, but realistically, I want them to like, through the hot, you know, time of the day, I want them to be in it all the time. But yeah, so. Okay, and then. So yeah, I'm so ready for some cooler weather. So looking forward to having Lou over as well. It'd be really nice from the UK. So she can get some much needed R&R &R and chill out. And um, what just happened? What just happened? Oh yeah. So I probably won't get any stitching done in that week, unless we're sat down watching a film and we're having a, a nice evening and I can pull probably a smaller project out, nothing too humongous. Um, and I do that whilst watching TV or a film or something. So yeah, that'd be good. I do really need to go and get some food shopping. I need to think about what I'm gonna eat tonight. Probably a salad. I reckon salad's a good, a good thing to go for. I think that's a good thing to go for, I reckon. Um, I do love a salad, you know. I do. I could. I, I'd be lying if I said I could live on salad because I do love a salad, but I do. Yeah. Hang on a minute, holes. Wait a minute. That is in the wrong place. That is that. And you've already done that. So. Hold your horses, chicken. Let's unpick that one. Let's go back down there. And then let's go on this one. And let's go down. Boom, boom, boom. Now, now. Behave. Yay. And then that one there. And then one, two, three, four. One, two, three. You could just slide in there like that so I've got three turn going on here tell you what I could have to do with a cup of tea I know it's boiling, boiling bloody or outside, but I do like a cup of tea in the afternoon. And I know I'm a bit of a fat git right now because I've done no exercise whatsoever, but I actually quite fancy buying a bit of cake. 
A cup of tea and a bit of cake sounds bloody-tastic to me. I do like a bit of cake, actually. I think that's a British thing in me. Tea and cake. Such a British thing, and I love it. Tea and cake. Yep. I should just make cake, shouldn't I, really? Then I have to, don't have to buy it at the store, and I know what's in it. Oh, so when I went to the Decap Market, I mainly go there for all of my herbs and spices because it is a joke. When I tell you, fellow Brits, you beautiful English people with your cheap food, and I don't mean cheap as in cheap nasty food, I mean cheap food, um, where it's like a pound fifty for a, a thing of, like, I don't know, spices, like chilli powder or something. Here, it's like four dollars for spices. It's unbelievable. Um, grocery shopping is a joke out here it really is I mean it's unbelievable um, so I tend to get all of my herbs and spices from the decab market so I, I literally made a list the other day and I bought like and all my cheeses because they've got oh gosh they do Stilton <gasps> they do Stilton at the decab market they do Stilton and decent brie and like you just can't get decent cheeses anywhere and um, and I do love my cheese um, and they do proper like Welsh or English cheddar. I mean, the cheddar you get out here, guys, it's not proper cheddar cheese. I'm so sorry. They're all lying to you. It tastes like of nothing. When you get proper cheese from England or, you know, like other places like Wales or, you know, even like France, I mean, the cheeses are just tasteless out here and they're so expensive. Um, so anyway, I bought a really nice big thing of par parmesan because I love parmesan, or parmesan, as they say, um, and some Stilton, um, blue cheese you can get anywhere, that's like, you know, I don't bother going there for blue cheese, but anyway, I bought loads of herbs and spices, so marjoram, oregano, um, what you call cilantro, we call um, coriander, um, and then I got like my horse is on turmeric so I got massive vats of turmeric which is so cheap there like a big thing of turmeric is like a dollar um, it's so much cheaper so then obviously I, I got black pepper last time so I just mix the two together I do two and a half teaspoons of black pepper to every cup of turmeric and that's you know that's basically what I need to do to make up turmeric because turmeric for horses here is like 200 bucks for a two kilogram top and you're like no no that is a joke that's not even happening i will make my own so i went to the decab market and i swear they must have thought i was mental with the amount i bought they were like um yeah you've got issues clearly i bought two no two i bought five or six can't remember how many bought now massive vats of turmeric um and then like these tubs of like chili cotton like they are like, hang on, let me just, they're about this round, where are you? There you are, right? And then they are about this deep, okay? Chili powder, a dollar and four cents. A dollar and four cents. It is unreasonable, it's unbelievable, like what you can get at the Takab Farmers Market. So I got everything from cumin, coriander, ginger. Um, I like to make um, ginger cake. So um, I bought some pumpkin spice, wherever it is. Um, what else did I get? Uh, ginger. Um, chili powder, said that. <clears throat> chilies, you know, dry chilies. Um, and then I got um, cumin. Oh my God, there is so much I got. There's so much I can't even remember what I got. Um, paprika and then also smoked paprika um, yeah and like everything I bought came to $70 I mean I bought a lot of spice and, and about six tubs of turmeric plus cheese plus I bought some wine there um, what else did I buy there this time I didn't buy any meat because I just done a um, Costco run for the meat I tend to get my meat at Costco um, Oh, I got some, um, what do you call it, coconut milk, but in like little cartons because I put them in, in curry 
and coconut milk in the store is like three dollars two dollars eighty or something and i'm like mate i'm not paying that that's just ridiculous oh and i got a thing of sesame oil because sesame oil was like nine dollars for a small thing of sesame oil at um walmart and i'm like again i'm not paying that <laughs> So I got a big thing of sesame oil, which cost like $7. Oh, a big thing of um, walnuts as well, which cost like $4. So half walnuts, walnut halves, a massive bag of them, huge bag, for $4. I mean, it's just crazy what, what grocery stores are here. Unreal. So yeah. So that was a good buy and obviously because I took my client as well, we had a bit of a chat on the way and a chat on the way back and don't do this to me. I've gone the whole way through this without a knot. So you can do one. All right, thank you. But yeah, I do like going to the Decab market. I like going to the Asian markets as well, but that just wasn't in the same area this time. Oh no, hang on, I've got another knot. Come on, people. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. Not sure if my thread's getting tired and it's a bit like, come on, holes, you need to wrap this up now because I want to sleep. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna have a cup of tea and then I'm gonna go to the shops and get some bits from Aldi. Aldi is a bit cheaper for things, but the thing is with Aldi, I do love it, but you can't get everything at Aldi. So I find that I'm shopping like three different stores. I shop in Publix for my British stuff, um, like salad cream and Bisto gravy and all that. And then I shop at Walmart for my cleaning products, because a lot of them you can't get at Aldi and um, my tea bags I get from their best of British Tetley Tetley Brett best of British or something and then um, you know my fruit and veg and stuff because it's all so expensive at Walmart I get at um, Aldi and some of my cheeses actually I've got some decent sourdough bread at the um, farmers market as well is nice. I do like sourdough bread. Okay, so I feel like this place has cooled down a little bit now. My windows are furnaces. It's so difficult. Um, right, bear with one second. What have I done now? Oh, I think I'm alright. I think what I've done is I've just... Um, I've just said on Pattern Keeper that I've stitched stitches that I haven't stitched. So I think I'm alright. Just need to do these three up here. Because I've said that I've stitched them, but I haven't stitched them. So yeah, I think tonight I am going to um, make a salad and then with a nice chill glass of wine, I'm gonna sit and edit this because there's some bits I need to fast forward, like the part that I was unpicking all of my work. Nightmare, hey ho. I think I'm going to call it a night in a minute because I literally have nothing else to talk about. I mean, that's basically been my life. Um, I will put some pictures at the end of this video of what my property looks like um, because it looks stunning right now. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, 
and I'm hoping this this part of the year this end part of the year is going to be when I really start making some headway on the barn um, to get that sorted out and get that built I've got loads of clients that are interested in boarding with me which is fantastic I don't think that the boarding side of it or the livery side of it for people in England I don't think that side of it is going to be a problem at all I am thinking actually about I'm toying with the idea because I have got a lot of land here but you know I I have and I haven't a lot of it is um, also wooded as well and I like that because it means that we can do trail rides through the woods and people can ride in the summer and they can still be out of the um, you know the heat so I really do like the idea of you know having trails through the the woods and the forest and stuff so you know I was I came across my bill for quarantine for my horse the other day and it was like two thousand seven hundred dollars for um, 17 days one seven 17 days in quarantine and I was like I am majorly missing a trick here so I said to my dad, like, I know the biosecurity is going to be, like, crazy, but you know what? That's my thing. I love all that. I love, like, procedures and rules and regulations and, and all that jazz. I just, that's my thing. And so I said to him, like, what do you think when I build the um, other barn? Because I've got three barns going up. So one's going up now, second one's going up, and then the third one's going up. And I have one barn so I've got basically two barns going up but they're going to be connected in the middle with a roof but they're going to be separate so I was going to make one barn boarding one barn was going to be um, rehabilitation and therapy and then and that was the one that was connected and then the third barn um, I like the idea of doing um, what do you call it Qu um, quarantining horses because so many horses fly into Florida um, that it would just be, you know, it, I, if I, if I knew that there was a place around here that could quarantine my horse, I would have gone for it straight away, but, um, and also if Miami was a nicer airport, I probably would have flown my horse in, but I was told that Miami is a bit of a hole, um, to say the least, hang on, bear with, what have I done for... So, like, they recommended that I flew my horse into um, JFK instead of Miami. But I'm sure there are plenty of people that fly their horses in Miami because Ocala, Wellington, they are huge, huge places, um, you know, for horses. <clears throat> so, and anyway, there are going to be plenty of people that fly their horses in, in Miami that want them to... Um, you know, go to Georgia or go to Tennessee or Kentucky or South Carolina or North Carolina or even Virginia. So I'm, a, I'm like en route to all of those places. So I just thought that that would be a really, really good thing because the horses have to stay in their store. They can't go out, which means that I don't have to worry about having extra um, field space for them. Um, the horses can't touch, you see. So all I need to do is make sure that my stables were fully boarded so they couldn't touch and that the people managing and working in that facility were only working in that facility. They weren't then going crossed between, you know, working in the rehab center and, um, you know, the borders and everything. They would have to be strictly, you know, that is your zone and, and you don't touch any of the other horses. But you know what? People aren't stupid. They know, they know, and you know, they'll be, they'll be absolutely fine. Um, you know, I think it's just a case of if you're dealing with any horses, you just need to make sure you either wash your hands or at the very least, if you don't have time to wash your hands at that second, have loads of those anti, um, you know, in hospitals, you've got those antiseptic um, things that have got like, um, what do you call it? The anti back things that you just like soap dispensers, anti back dispensers, um, because they're only quarantining for contagious equine metritis, which is something that only ever found in mares or stallions. It's a reproductive thing. So I think that would be such a good idea. On one side I can have mares, the other side I can have stallions. Oh, perfect. So I just think that is banging. And my dad was like, yeah, Holes, that sounds like a brilliant idea. You know, he knows that I'm, you know, pretty up there with procedures and things and, um, 
I'm looking at that as an, a different, another area of income. Um, so yeah, something else to look forward to, to uh, strive towards, to you know, plan and maybe talk to the bank about it at a later date. So that's all good. Anyway, I don't know whether I, I, I discussed it. You know when I said to you, my TV stopped working and I was saying I got a credit card and everything. Anyway, there was a point to that. And then I went on this like whole tangent with my bank. So anyway, the point was, after I got um, accepted by Care Credit, I was like, I'm never gonna get accepted by anything else because everything else seemed to decline me. Anyway, I had to look at Walmart again for another TV and this time I bought the extra warranty. And it said that I can buy it with the um, Walmart credit card, which happened to be a Capital One credit card. Credit card. Now, I have been told by other people that Capital One are the easiest credit cards to get. <laughs> well, they may have been, but I got declined because I had no credit history whatsoever. Anyway, so I thought, well, you know, let's just try it. They're only going to like decline me again, aren't they? You know, what, what the hell? But if I don't try, I'll never know. Anyway, so I did, I put it through and they, they gave me a two grand credit limit. I mean, I couldn't believe it. So I was like, yes. So I bought my TV on my um, credit card, which is fantastic. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to start getting, um, you know, some decent mileage on my credit over the next few years, or next few months at least. Um, I've been told it would take about a year to get a credit, like a proper credit established. But you know what? You just need that chance, don't you? You just need that stepping stone. And, and half the time, these are the stepping stones that people just don't give you. So, oh, no wonder people really struggle with credit. Anyway, so I did want to tell you that, but I clearly went on on another tangent. And I... I keep talking so I think I'm gonna I'm going to call it a day with my stitching I'm gonna go and get something for food get a nice bottle of wine put it in the freezer and I can make it extra crispy cold it's what I love I'm gonna have a cup of tea before I go and then I'm gonna do the horses Make sure they're all okay, give them extra hay. And then the cats come in. And then I don't know, I might just work on something, you know. I don't know what I'll work on tonight. I fancy, I do still fancy working on something tonight, so. I'll, um, yeah. And then tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is another day. And then it won't be long, and we'll get our um, our whip go results for uh, August, September. Oh my goodness, guys, we're almost in September already. Like, wow, what happens? What happens? Crazy, huh? Crazy. So yeah, I am going to leave this video here, lovelies. Thank you for everyone who has come back to listen to me rambling. I mean, I really, really was rambling. Um, I will do another stitch with me next month. Um, towards probably the end of the month. Because then I can give you an update on arenas and what's going on and all that jazz. Um, so I need to speak to my... Um, the people that I'm doing the surface with tomorrow um, yeah and find out when they can deliver the surface and then I'll have to go from there um, then I can arrange for the guy to come out and do my arena right so yeah I am gonna leave it there guys thank you so much for joining me and um, have a lovely rest of the evening and well I don't even know what time you're you're seeing this it might be in the morning so have a lovely stitchy day if you're having one if not take care look after each other stay in the cool if you can in England I'm really sorry I don't really know what's going on with the weather right now but 
Um, as much as I complain about the heat over here, I would take this over rain and cold any day. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you so much guys and I will see you in my end of month video. See you later. Bye.